All right, all right, all right. What's up, what's up, what's up? Michael Gavin here. Say everything three times, three times, three times. <laughs> Michael Gavin, your mind mechanic, tune it up, hearts and minds, one at a time so your ideas don't die in your heart, your head, or your heart drive. Today's topic we're going to talk about is how you keep getting your business to go up, up, and up, and up. And I think the short of it is any of you who are, have been getting into, or if you have not, that is investing, um, something I wish I would have learned more about, you know, 15 years ago, it's never better than today to start. So um, if you start looking at charts of the S&P 500 or cryptocurrencies, if you look at things on a minute by minute or day by day, it may drive you crazy. And the roller coaster ride is quite intense. Um, and what I found in the last couple of years of uh, getting involved in some cryptocurrency specifically um, is that and how this will relate to your business, because I've seen this, I've been in business myself, you know, self-employed since I was you know, 18 years old and 35 years old as the recording of this, coached a lot of people. I've worked with a lot of businesses uh, through my career. And so I've observed a lot. And so these charts that you see with stocks um, and cryptos is if you look at things on the daily, uh, it can be scary. Uh, because it definitely does not just go like this, nor does it only, mm, depends on what it is sometimes, but just go like this, straight down or straight up. But rather, if something ultimately is really good and, and, and sticks around and is consistent, it is the over time, it is the over a year, two years, three years, five years, decade that really matters. And so at times with certain things in a, a, a business, a stock or whatever can have a year that sucks. And then that next year is nothing but up. And then that next year is down a little bit. The next year's up more than the prior year that was up. But there's never, and you see those, those memes where it's like what people think success is, you know, rocket ship to the top. What success really is, and it's got these squiggly lines all over the place and up and down and left and right and then up some more. Um, and I believe there's a lot of these things that people say are cliches and they're cliches for a reason. And it's because there is some truth to them, whether we want to see that or not. And so to the degree that you can take the pressure off yourself because you have a bad day or a bad week, maybe even a bad month. Because what I find is that by and large, the people who have the most success are simply the people who stick with something over the long haul and aren't just looking at the daily and thinking this isn't working. There was a guy named Jordan Harbinger. He used to run the Harbinger, uh, the Harbinger show. I think that's what it is now, the Jordan Harbinger show. Uh, but it used to be Art of Charm. And I filmed a lot of events that he was at. And he would come in as the podcast expert. And essentially, uh, he would start off with, don't do a podcast like very kind of negative around it initially. And people think, wow, I just came to this presentation to see this guy who's got millions of downloads and this super successful podcast and to learn from him. And the first thing he's telling me is to not start a podcast. But then the not start a podcast was simply, are you doing this because you want to do it? You have fun doing it. You enjoy doing it. And that you'd potentially be able to do it or willing to do it for five years and never even look at the stats and maybe not even make any money. Then, and potentially only then, we have the greatest chance of success with it. There's a guy named Sean Cannell, who friends with, who does a lot with uh, YouTube. And same kind of overall concept is that at times the first five, 10 videos that you might load up, they're not going to do anything. The next 35, you might gain a little bit of traction. And at times, it might take a few hundred uploads before you really find your groove, your voice, and are doing something that's really working. Uh, another guy, uh, uh, ooh, forget the name of the guy off the top of my head with this one, but the, the story was this guy had like 900 blog posts, and he's like, uh, oh gosh, it's on the tip of my tongue, the guy, but I wish I could say it. But anyways, he had like 900 blog posts is a story I remember. And he's like, it was my mom, my aunt, my sister, and whoever, like, it never really grew that big. I write one day on chicken McNuggets and like chocolate covered chicken McNuggets and whatever. Like he had this crazy thing where he's like, it was all over the place. It was a mess. And by and large, it never grew. But what it did do is it, it sharpened his skills. 
that then I think he took a little bit of break or whatever, rebranded, transitioned, found clarity. Here's what I love to do. Here's what I'm great at. Here's what I'd like to spend more time doing. And then when he brought out this 901st blog post, we'll say, with a new branding and a new clarity and a new confidence and all this talent that he built up through the 900 random posts, that then that one he did like got millions of um, of reads, you know, of viewers on that blog post. Um, and then that blog post or that blog really took off for him. And I think that we live in a world where people who have figured something out want to provide a shortcut to people so that they can bypass the 900 blog posts or the 300 YouTube videos that no one watches so that the 300 first through the 1000 can blow up. And it's because at times we see people who something's going on that it doesn't seem on the surface, especially through observables, i.e. follower likes this and that. You're like, wow, where did they come from? And you look and you're like, uh, like I just had a gal showed me a, a, a person. She's like, I really love this guy's content. It's really great. And I go look and the observables are, he has zero videos it passed two years ago. Well, two years ago, it's 2022 at the recording of this. So we'll call it 2020. So nothing uploaded prior to 2020 on this channel. Yet his video, uh, this the, the, the YouTube channel started in 2013. So what happened in those seven years? Did he, did he upload anything? Did he just upload a few and then stop? Did he upload a lot and, and gained a, you know, a lot of subscribers and then you know, took a break and then changed and rebranded? I don't know any of that because I didn't find the guy prior to today. So all I can see is observables. Observables are he's got almost 975 videos uploaded. He's got 300 and something thousand subscribers. And he's ultimately loading a video pretty much every single day, seven days a week for what is two, two and a half years. And so, but I don't know if the channel was already at three, you know, 300,000 subscribers before he uploaded any of those videos and unloaded them. So we only can see what we can see sometimes. We don't know the energy, the effort. We don't know, did he have a different channel? I mean, I have a YouTube channel called Gebs86. It's got uh, 105, I think, videos on it. And it's got like four or 500 subscribers, I think. Then my next channel that I had, that I did a consistent video on every week for almost two years, just Michael Gebbin. And I, I had to found more of a voice and I was very consistent at it and being strategic even. And I got to almost 10,000 subscribers with that. Uh, but like, if you didn't know about my other channel where I had some motivational videos, I had, I mean, it's still up, you go check it out. I had movie trailer that we made in high school for a movie called The Vault that I made with my dad and my friends and made it into some film festivals. And this guy who did some major motion pictures did the little trailer music for it, named Cody Westheimer. and like. That's on the channel. My original same day edit from like 2005 I did with my wedding companies on that channel. Like it's really all over the place, but yet 105 videos, four or 500 subscribers. Yet the other one had at the time when I got to almost 10,000, like 150 or 60. So 40 or 50 more videos. And yet I had went from 500 subscribers to almost 10,000 subscribers, right? This stuff just doesn't get talked about enough. All the things that you'll experiment, you'll test, you'll try, you'll tweak, you'll toss, all the imperfect action, the spaghetti at the wall. And at times, I think we're, I've found in my life, in the day and age we live in, is even with my helping people, sharing stories here, it's not so that I can completely or any of us can completely eliminate all pain, all suffering, all struggle, and all difficulty from a person's path. It's simply that sometimes people are going down a path. I know that I've been in places where I'm struggling and I can't see the forest through the trees. I don't want to stay in this like struggle zone, right? I want to get out of it. And sometimes that takes a person who can see things more clearly to help me get out of it. And so some of you are in paths where you're doing certain things and either right now you're at the path where maybe you're just starting, right? That podcast story, hearing that, and recalibrating your expectation to go when you've done a few podcasts, but you're having fun and you don't have a ton of listens, you don't go, oh, I must suck. But you can hear stories of people go, yeah, you know what? It may take you 50 episodes. Okay. Right. I remember a buddy of mine who 
uh, started making, it's changed a little through the years and some of the stuff was a lot of travel and COVID hurt, but like I got into a place of three to $5,000 a month with stock footage. And I think, wow, that's awesome. Like he loaded stock footage to this site and he made three to $5,000 a month, more or less passive after he did the work to upload off the stock footage. Okay, awesome. So you can, oh, okay, I got stock footage. I'll go do the same thing. The interesting thing is, is that he didn't make any money for six to nine months. He was under the assumption and expectation that he needed to load 1,000 clips before he potentially would make any money. Now, can you imagine that if your expectation to do something before you'd make money was that you had to do it 500 times and you know you've only done it five times so far? So if you really wanted, like really want it, but you knew, oh, it's got to be 500. Now, you may make it 500 and it, it, you still haven't got it to work. But the likelihood is quantity typically leads to quality. The problem is, is that with these shortcut things, some people are at ground zero. They have no business background. They have nobody in their family who's in business. They've never had a business. They've never been an entrepreneur. They've never made any money on their own. And they want to quit their job. They quit their job. And then they're under an expectation that in three weeks, they're going to make tons of money when there's a lot of different activities and a lot of things that you're probably not going to learn in three weeks that this narrowed in things acting as though you can bypass everything and just follow these steps. For some people that'll work. And then when you see people it works for, and it doesn't work for you, you get discouraged. But if you knew, well, it could happen in three weeks. It also happens for a lot of people in three months to three years. Now, all of a sudden you take the pressure off and you stick with it because you want to learn, you want to grow and you get better. And the expectation is it's going to take some time. So I think that we need more stories that share diversity in regards to how people are achieving success in entrepreneurship. And I realize even just as today, something I've kind of known, but got rehammered in, which is really any way can work. Whatever you're trying to do, questioning whether or not is this the right price or that right price or this color, the right color, or this the right name or this the right thing, or should I do this or should I do that, which is something that even I do and do today on certain things. And then I step full circle and go, when I look at all the things that I succeeded at, and then I could say the things that failed at, the only reason something failed a lot of times for me is because I literally, and I don't even look at it as a failure, but like it's not succeeding today is simply because I stopped. If you work something long enough consistently and then build up all the little internal beliefs and I mean, all the things I can get into, typically it's inevitable success. The problem is, is we don't know if that inevitability is going to happen in five weeks, five months, five years, or 15 years, right? But to the degree that we stick with something or we keep experimenting, then when we find something, then we stick with that, that your likelihood is if you're with something for enough years, you're going to have success. And if you've been with something for years right now and you don't have success, take a deep look, a real deep look. I've had people who I help, you know, videographers at times. I mean, I help a lot of different creatives and people um, you know, with their mindsets and their perspectives and, uh, you know, their, their mental game. But, you know, I have somebody who said, I've been doing this for uh, 18 years. I still can't make a living with it, right? So if that's your, if you're not making a living and you've been doing it for 18 years, your belief in yourself, something, something's off. Like you got some like, ugh, right? Because you're frustrated because like I've been doing this for 18 years. But I've used the example, let's say just weddings. Weddings is a simple thing. You can photograph, you can film. There's a lot of different things you could do to be a service provider for the wedding industry, right? But let's use wedding video, which is what I had. Look. There could be a person who says they've been filming weddings for 17 years and they still don't succeed or 18 years, whatever, 20 years. And they've only filmed 20 weddings in 20 years. Right? There could be somebody else who films 20 weddings in one year, 20 weddings in year two. We'll just use a straight number, but 20 weddings, year three, 20 weddings, year four, right? By the time they're at year 20, I don't even know what that math comes out to, you know, 20 years of a 400 or something, you know? four to six, 800. I've got math off the top of my head for that. But like, you know, that's that aspect. So who are you going to trust that has more experience? 
the person who just says, I've been doing this for 18 years, but they're, they're all irritated because they're not succeeding at it. Like there's not that quantity there because it's not just, did you get paid or not? Sometimes it's just how much have you done that thing? Right. And sometimes we're just not putting in the reps. It's like, if you wanted to lose 50 pounds, you can't just do the right thing for a day or a week. And for certain body types, not even a month or two. And depending on what you're really wanting to do, you'd have to do that thing for life. You know, the probability if, if, if there's an overweightness that you're saying, it's like, I should be about 50 pounds lighter. Whatever you're doing, whoever you're being, and whatever your actions are currently that have you at that weight, if you get down to you know, 50 pounds lighter, you're not going to be able to do whatever you did and do it until you achieve the weight and then go back and do the exact things that you did before that had you at the 50 pounds heavier. You'd have to consistently do for life the thing that got you the 50 pounds off. And so my belief is that too many times we're doing something that works, but in the very beginning, it doesn't look like it does. Right? In the very beginning, you do all the right things that are going to have you lose the 50 pounds and you haven't lost a pound. But it's the continually doing it over time and potentially for a lifetime that will have you lose the weight, keep the weight off, and consistently stay at the weight you'd like to be. And that's the thing for business is at times you're doing something that can and will work. But if you only do it once, twice, or maybe 10 times, you haven't done it enough to get the reps. And depending on what you're doing, I mean, there's so many variables. And that's why we need to find things that we're going to consistently show up and do for the long haul. And typically it's going to have to be something that we have some level of enjoyment. There's going to be things we don't enjoy, but if the overall is something you don't, you'll probably give up. If you need money tomorrow, you'll probably give up. And so just ask yourself that question. How many reps have you really put in? Are you really honest with yourself? Right? What I didn't mention about the guy with the stock footage, he loaded 13,000 clips up to get to the three to 5,000 a month over the course of, I think, two or three years. Right? And I think 80, 90% of the clips never sold. So when you ask yourself and you said, I've done something for three years, did you have a full-time job that you worked 60 hours a week and you spent an hour a week attempting to do this thing for three years? Or have you truly not had a job and can look me or in someone else in the eye and go, I have put 10 hours a day for three years calling people, emailing people. Can I look at the trajectory of videos you've put on a YouTube channel, a podcast, or and it's probably a good place to end. We'll see. <laughs> Is your idea dying in your heart, your head, or your hard drive? There's certain things that mental reps matter, right? And there's other things. If you want to become good at guitar, if you want to lose weight, if you want to, you know, run a business, you know, if you want to have a successful podcast, write a book. It ain't the mental, the mental reps will help you do the physical reps that'll help you win. But if all you're doing is, <laughs> my man, Brandon Hawk would say mental masturbation. Like, it's like this, just you're, 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 you're not really acting. You're not doing anything with anybody else. You know, uh, masturbation's doing your, <laughs> doing yourself. All right. A little, little uh, extreme there. Something that you probably don't usually hear me say, but like, it's true right? There's that aspect where, um, you know, to grow a business, to learn to play the guitar, we need the guitar in our hands. We need to have other people. We got to put the videos on podcasts. We got to put the videos on YouTube. You got to post the thing to Facebook. You got to go to the network. Like you got to go and not just consume and take things in and keep things going on in your head. Whenever I get too analytical in my head, it drives me crazy. And then I've got to act. I've got to do the things, put it into the world, get feedback and keep putting it into the world, right? I just can't mentally um, think that I'm going to lose weight, but yet never eat properly, never do anything to lose weight and keep eating five pints of ice cream at night. 
Like I can think about how, you know, that's the thing I think with the law of attraction and things that people get confused about sometimes it's like, I'm just going to think my way to do it. Well, the last six letters of a, attraction or action. So there's a combination of visualization, beliefs, and all these internal things that then will combine to take inspired action, to take action in general, and then get feedback. And then do that again and again and again and again and again and recognize there will be ups and downs and lefts and rights. And the only people with a consistent paycheck are people who are employees. I don't know any, they may hit numbers that they know they're always going to hit. Like you may get to a place where you never make less than $5,000 a month and you're always making at least five, but you may have $10,000 a month a $7,500 a month, a $5,500 a month, and then a $28,000 a month, and then a $5,000. Like, you may never go below five. Do so you know you're going to make that? But I never see people just consistently go and make $5,000 every month like autopilot because people gain clients, lose clients, things really take off, then they slow down. Like, that is life. The only people who get paid the same amount every single week are people who are working for the people whose businesses go all up and down. So anyway. God dang, God dang, God diggity dang, your daily jumpstart, Michael Gebbin here, your mind mechanic, tuning up your heart, your mind, one at a time, so your ideas do not die in your heart, your head, or your hard drive. Leave me a comment, send me a message, wherever you're at, you can find me, I do a lot of interacting in Facebook Messenger right now, specifically, that's facebook.com slash gebs86, there's a picture of me and my wife, uh, if you're on Facebook right now, you should be able to see me and click on that, send me a message, or leave me a comment, if you're on YouTube, um, you can leave comments there. And if you're on podcast, you can go over to Facebook or you can send me a message at michael at the I'm grateful for you. I appreciate your time and attention. And I hope these help you. Keep rocking. Keep rolling. We'll talk soon. Take care.